Her life was in service until a chain of events changed everything. A few years after enlisting in the Marines, Tae U says she experienced a sexual assault. Years after that, she says she reported the assault to command. The fallout, a mental health struggle that led to time in the brig. Tonight, Tay is opening up about her fight for answers, for transparency, and for justice. And her story is piece of a larger investigation by ABC News Live called Battle Cry, fighting against sexual assault in the military with our Stephanie Ramos. I served nine years in the Marine Corps. I think today I wouldn't have been here without the support of others, especially my, my sister. She's been my rock. We came to the States as refugees back in 1997. My parents were political freedom fighters against the Burmese government for their corruption. I joined the Marine Corps with a mental health waiver. I really don't know who Tae U was before the Marine Corps. I think I was still trying to figure out who that little girl was. Who are you now? I'm a survivor. I'm a fighter. And most importantly, I am a veteran still. Tae U first joined the Marines in 2013. In 2015, she says she was sexually assaulted. In 2018, Tay reported that assault to her command as an unrestricted report, requiring the Department of Defense to investigate. Tay's military attorney says despite her unrestricted report in 2018, she was never informed about an investigation. I told him the full names, but they never did anything. They never filed it. And then when I found out that they never filed it, that's when I had to take it on my own hands and ask for help. Tay's military attorney, Captain Garrett J. Sweeney, says they mishandled her unrestricted report, saying the sexual assault disposition report acknowledges that the command failed to immediately report. After reporting twice, the Marine Corps initiated a medical retirement for Tay and did not investigate the alleged assault. I used the Marine Corps as like this anchor, but it was. And so. When I signed, knowing that I was going to exit out, knowing that this is my rating, knowing that, like, hey, I'm going to medically retire, I at least will have health care. They didn't process her case, none of that. And so she began to experience post-traumatic stress. During the medical retirement process, Tay says she experienced a severe post-traumatic stress episode while at home. She has a flashback. She thinks she's being assaulted again and she starts to go after her then partner who is not an assailant and just a very great human and starts to try to attack him and so he just takes himself locks himself in in, in a bedroom and just calls the police i just remembered stabbing at the door wanting to just hurt myself hurt somebody her partner at the time called 911, fearing for his safety. Tay was arrested for a class one misdemeanor, but was quickly released. The social worker at the jailhouse, when I was telling him what I was going through, and there, there was this questionnaire that they have at the jailhouse, these suicide questions, if you're fit for confinement, he said, you need care, you need mental health care, this is not a place for you. I was released for about a week or so. Tay immediately checks herself into a mental health facility. The Marine Corps then picks her up from the mental health care facility that she checked herself in, into, places her in the brig, puts her in solitary confinement, and charges her with attempted murder. Tay eventually spoke to her partner, who was involved in that prior altercation that resulted in her arrest. And the Marine Corps told her that was a violation of a military protective order. The Marine Corps sending her to the brig, a prison on the ship because of this violation, though Tay was still receiving care at a mental health facility. In the middle of still being at Poplar Springs, my command took me out and they're like, because you violated the MPO and because you talked to Michael and you went back to the house, 
you're gonna get sent to the brig. And then I got sent to the brig as pre-trial. I wasn't read my charges or anything. And when I was in the brig about a week afterwards, that's when they finally gave me my charges. Tay was in the brig until her trial date for a total of 328 days. I had multiple suicide attempts in the brig. I've tried to cut myself. Marine Corps confinement procedures do take mental health conditions into account. The procedures read, brig staff will not honor confinement physicals indicating suicide risk, and those with mental health conditions will be referred to an emergency room or mental health department. Despite these procedures, Tay was not only removed from a mental health facility, but kept in brig confinement as well. In that video, you'll see the drain. I had to use my hands at one point because I defecated and my didn't go through. I remembered I wasn't allowed to wash my hands because there's no sink. It looks crazy because I'm rocking back and forth and I'm naked and I have nothing but a, a, a piece of underwear on. But they watched me. These people did nothing. I'm literally going to range in a cell and I'm having this breakdown and they're doing nothing. I felt like an animal. I felt like I had no rights at that point. Tay ended up taking a plea deal to get out. She got a, ended up getting a bad conduct discharge. If you serve in our military, you are more likely to be sexually assaulted than you are to be wounded by the enemy. Lindsay Knapp and Amy Braley Frank both served as victim advocates for the military and have become anchors of support for vets like Tay U and loved ones of service members still seeking answers. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! I plan on trying to reform the whole system because as I said, this is one fundamental problem that the victims have said they're not reporting these cases because they don't trust the chain of command. Lindsay and Amy, seeing the ongoing efforts New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand has made to change laws for survivors of sexual assault, are hopeful this meeting could lead to answers for families seeking them. Well, imagine you have been accused of something that could put you away for the rest of your life, and the decision maker is already biased. You have no civil liberties. In 2021, Senator Gillibrand was among other senators who passed the Military Justice Improvement and Increasing Prevention Act. We are asking for a collective justice to be done. The legislation removing the decision on whether to prosecute the accused from a commander. This law prompted by the murder of Army Specialist Vanessa Guillen. We are here united as one voice. If a leader finds out that one of their kids has sexually assaulted one of their other kids, at the very least, that leader is going to have a moment of pause, right? Like, you just are, right? Because you would never expect your kid to, to assault your other kid. Your job is to survive and be a voice for truth and justice, and I believe in you. I believe you can carry this weight. It's very heavy. Based on today's meeting, I've heard of a lot more problems beyond just fair prosecution, that service members are being retaliated against, they're being kept in inhumane conditions. That solitary confinement piece, that was their version of suicide prevention. You would think that that would drive anybody crazy, but I was promised I would get out of there after 24 hours. I kept asking my command, hey, my the men the brig is not responsible for my mental health, so I'm not getting any care. I would like to get some care. And so they try to do their best, but their best looked like a phone call while I'm chained up. General J.D. Alford, who oversaw Tay's case, wrote a letter asking that she continue to get care despite her bad conduct discharge, saying Corporal Wu was held accountable through a court-martial conviction and recommending that the Department of Veterans Affairs approve any future requests for mental disorder treatment. I think this is going to show the American people that we've given the military too many chances for them to take it upon themselves to correct the wrongs.
Our thanks to Stephanie Ramos. And Tay is not alone in her fight. Our investigation takes a closer look at assaults in the military. Battle Cry streams tonight at 8.30 p.m. right here on ABC News Live. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.